memories of playing with Connacht. How about Ireland? And I suppose for every Irish rugby fan, there's one day that stands out, and that is the famous day against England in 1985. And famous day. Give us your own thoughts on that particular day. Um, I suppose 1985 was an unusual team because um, the 82 team where we won the, 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 all the old dad's army they were called. So 83 was a remembrance of that and 84 they changed totally. So 85 were a team of kids. We, were, we called ourselves kids. We were all young lads. At least they were all young lads. I was one of the few oldies or golden oldies that came with it. But we had a very light pack of forwards and on that day against England uh, it started to rain a really heavy, a typical England, really heavy pack. And they were wearing us down. I could see we were trying everything. We were in our own half. <clears throat> and don't ask me where that call came from because I had tried everything in the on the, everything in the playbook to work, and I just I don't know. So it came out, just picked up on the air, but I don't know where it came from. It was the last gasp ever, I think. Well, seemed to do something because uh, all of a sudden the ball was fed to Lennon, was fed back out to Kiernan. He dropped the goal. The place went absolutely bananas. And the whole country lived off it for about five years. I think it was the only match, and as far as I remember, the only European international ever that, as a captain, when I had gone inside, the security guys, everybody came to me and said, you have to go back outside. And I had never <laughs> outside because the crowd never left the ground that day. So I had to go back outside and stand up on one of these plastic chairs, which I nearly fell off, and kind of just acknowledge the crowd. They wouldn't go away. And that was, it was like something you see after an All-Ireland final. We came out after and acknowledged the crowd. But that actually happened on, on that day. So it was fantastic atmosphere. And that team were a great, uh, great backline. Paul Deans, Brendan Mullen, Michael Kiernan, Trevor England, Hugo McNeil, uh, Keith Crossan. And we won in Cardiff that year with that kind of a backline playing, scoring tries against all the odds. And it was a very unusual side because they just, the, 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 their belief was they couldn't, they couldn't lose a match. They didn't know what the word losing meant. And they just carried on from there. And England was a result of that as well. We managed to beat England. And you were coached by a legendary man, Mick Doyle. Mick Doyle, yeah. And, 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 um, his straight talking kind of coaching style, I think, rubbed off him a lot, he would be fair to say. Oh, yes, definitely did. He was a very clever guy mentally and he could read a game well, but he gave everybody a license to play what was in front of them. So we ran the sessions ourselves, we ran the games, we had a license to change things on, on the day, which we did. And uh, I know we scored against Scott and Trevor England scored a try in the corner with two minutes to go, which is an incredible try as well. Some of the Cardiff tries were incredible tries and that was the spirit of uh, adventurism, I suppose. Uh, we just tried everything and it worked and Mick, Mick certainly was the, the anchor behind all of that. Of all the games that you played, whether it be for, you know, whether it be club, whether it be province, for the country, playing with the Lions, captaining the Lions in 83, is there one that stands out? Is it the England game that stands out in your mind or is there another game that we're not aware of that you, you uh, favour a little bit more? It's a very difficult one to call, to be honest with you. Um, my first cap for Ireland was in Australia, I think, was a big breakthrough because when I was playing with Canada there, I was only 20, 21, I think, and I went through a lot of period, uh, years of injury with, with an ankle, simple at that time, it's simple now with ligaments, but that time it was complicated. And I missed about four or five years, I'd say. I was on the national squad at 21, and then I was out of the, out of the scene for about four or five years. So when I got the breakthrough in Australia, it was a massive thing for me. So that was a huge one. I think my first uh, cap was captain of Ireland. I'll always remember coming down the tunnel and going out on the pitch. I mean, that to me, and seeing everybody and everything, that to me was an absolutely fantastic moment. And then the victories after that, you could pick any of them. Fantastic memories, great, great memories of guys I played with, and things you couldn't buy, you know, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, a true living legend. Please give it up for Karen Fitzgerald.